you know, I started off, just got a regular job. I was a bus boy and, you know, I gave up on that after a year because I knew that wasn't going to fulfill my life. And, you know, I wasn't going to have any financial gain from that. And then I just bought a microphone. I, you know, I, I, I remember I went to Best Buy. I was like, what's the cheapest microphone I can get? They're like, oh, we got this nice microphone, 50 bucks. And I was like, I bought it. And at the time, this was like 2011, I had a Dell computer and um, I had illegally downloaded some like program, like I pirated some program, some really like crappy program and uh, just kind of figured it out. I started hanging out with some other people, meeting some rappers and uh, uh, meeting some affiliates that I'm still affiliated with today. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, kind of figured it out. I posted on SoundCloud. I, you know, I had five followers and I had a thousand then I had a hundred thousand. And now fast forward to today on Spotify, I have um, 3.2 million uh, monthly listeners. These are, these are congas. I'm not, I'm not too good at them, but I just, I just bang them for fun. And I recorded some congas on a new track that I'm going to release. I actually really like this instrument because, you know, I'm not really good at instruments. You know, I've tried the drums, I've tried the guitar, and, you know, I kind of kind of set those aside and kept focusing on rap. But when I bought the congas, it just felt kind of natural. I mean, like my friend Rocky, who produces with me, um, he's just like, I'm like, but I don't know how to play. He's like, just just bang them. Just started banging them and it sounded good. And I was, yeah, I had a really fun time. So, yeah, I keep them there and they're really pretty. They're purple and they... It looked good in the room. They inspired nice, yeah. when I write. It's yeah. good background for uh, for a podcast. So very yeah, cool. this is my studio. Yeah, this is where I record. I have my mic there. I have all the soundproof. I got a sunlight here. It's you know when I record, I like to be. I got some plants there and some art. I like to be in a good vibe. Like I can't be in like a crusty, uh, you know, place. Okay, so I got into poker through my lifelong friend that I met, I met in a, at a public bus stop in high school, Mikey, the magician, my fans know of him. He's a, he's a producer. He's a artist. He's a, he's an everything. Um, he's a great guy. And, you know, when I was about 18, he showed me the game of poker and I absolutely fell in love. And at the time in Florida, I, you know, I, I lived right by this casino called the Mikasuki and you only have to be 18 to play. So I would play there all the time. I played really, really small, you know, hundred dollar buy-in or less sixty dollar minimum buy-in one one two poker and um i just fell in love i mean i haven't stopped playing since I, I i just love the game it's i love what it how it stimulates me in my in my mind i love how time consuming it is um that's like a big thing for me i mean there's i haven't to this day there hasn't been anything that i can do for eight to ten hours and not even blink and not even uh you know, get bored. Like I can't, I can't sit down and write a song for eight to 10 hours. I mean, it's really difficult, but I can play poker because it's just constant stimulation, stimulation. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I, I just love it. it. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. That's yeah, no, it's a great game. It is cool too. Cause you can business people, athletes, uh, what, you know, musicians, anyone you can come in and play with anybody and, and yeah, exactly. chill and relate and, and talk. It's just sort of a neutralized game where, Everyone, everyone uh, gets to interact. How does the economics work when you go to say, I want to drop an album? What, what do you actually do? So, so what people don't understand, I mean, you know, some people do understand, but, you know, labels and record labels, you know, it's a dying, it's a dying cause. Like it's a dying, dying thing. You know, back in the nineties and the early two thousands, I mean, there was no Twitter, there was no Instagram, there was no, you know, TuneCore, which is my distribution company that I use. There was basically not, you know, these outlets that people can use to be independent. You, you couldn't do that. I mean, like if you wanted to make a million plus dollars as a rapper, I mean, no, nobody can do it independently in the, in the nineties. So, you know, you would have to really sign a record label. So, you know, I, I don't fault those people. They, they really had no choice, but, you know, fast forward to when SoundCloud came out, when Spotify came out, when TuneCore came out, when these, these distribution companies came out, I mean, you can do it, by yourself. That's what I did. I, I posted my first song in 2011 or 12 or whatever the time was on SoundCloud myself and people were streaming it. And then fast forward, I started uploading all my music to TuneCore, which is my, which is a distribution company that you just pay. Like I can upload an album, right? So every year annually, I pay $50 to renew that album and they distribute it uh, throughout all platforms. And then TuneCore pays me on a stream basis. And I do that independently. And you know what? I have a million plus fans, three million fans 
uh, all by myself and I don't have to cut money with labels. Labels, they, labels are blood suckers. I mean, labels are, they want to take 82%, 75%, eight, like, and they leave you with 16% of them. And this is what they do. They'll be like, Hey, look, you're a good rapper. I'll give you a million dollars, but you got to pay me back. And then after you pay me back, you get 17% of all streaming revenue and I get the rest. By far, like by far, I mean, it's, it's, it's like such a landslide, like it's not even close. Like my favorite thing to do is shows. I mean, I absolutely adore doing shows. I know actually a lot of rappers are not even too fond of doing shows, but I, I just can't see it. I love it so much. I, there's no better feeling and no better. It's, it's so surreal to, to perform and have the whole entire crowd sing my lyrics. When I first started rapping, you know, people would show up but not really know my lyrics and you know they were fan they were just kind of new fans they didn't really they weren't really diehards yet and now fast forward i mean i can go do a show in any in any city on this planet i mean i'm talking about the whole entire planet i mean i've done shows in russia and germany and fucking blah 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 and to hear these people singing my lyrics back to me it it gives me chills still to this day and i haven't lost that and i'm so happy i haven't lost that love for it because you know i feel like when that love goes away i mean it's time to retire but I'm still obsessed with hearing them sing with me. Um, I think there's nothing better than that. You know, the money's great. I love money. I don't. I hate the, when rappers are like, it's not about the money. But it is about the money. I need. I like the money. I love to take care of my wife. I love to take care of my my mother, my father. I love to take care of myself. I I, I believe that is important too. But are you are you married now? Officially, are you married? We're not officially married, but she's my fiance, so we haven't okay. put a, a date on it yet. Yeah. All right, well, congratulations. That's Thank exciting. You. I remember we we've talked uh, in, in some detail about your relationship then, and that's yeah, that's amazing, man. I'm really happy that you yeah uh, yeah. yeah. That. He was there since like before my first album, like which is great because you know as I became successful and more quote unquote famous, which I don't consider myself famous, but in my lane I guess I am. But as I became more known it's hard to tell who really loves you and who really loves what you can do for them and loves your status. And it's very hard to, yeah, to, no. to, to, to know. Yeah. What makes for you a successful show, a good show, or if you don't, if you don't feel on your game completely, yeah, you wear that on your sleeve. So it's very fan, it's very fan based and it's very energy based and it's very emotion based. Um, you know, if I do a show and I feel like the, the fans weren't giving me the energy that, you know, I felt was, was needed to have a good show or like the energy just wasn't there. You know, I really, you know, I take it on myself. I don't, I don't blame them. I never have. Um, I'm never like, Oh, Detroit, you suck today. Like you didn't go hard. It was, I just put it on myself. I mean, you have to really control the crowd. I need to be the one orchestrating this crowd to, you know, go insane and go crazy. And um, so, yeah, sometimes I have bad shows uh, that I think are bad. And, you know, it's funny because no one else thinks they're bad. All my right. fans, like that was the greatest show of my entire life, but you know, my perspective is very, very different from their perspective. So lately I've been trying to understand that because, you know, I'm very, very hard on myself. I mean, like, you know, some people don't want to be in the mosh pit. Some people don't want to be jumping up and down. Some people just want to, some people don't even want to sing the lyrics. Some people want to sit back and, and drink a beer and listen to the songs and appreciate the music. And I have to understand that. But, um, you know, it's very important to me that I put on a great show because that's what keeps the fans going back. I mean, I've done so many sold out tours and that's because you know the fans will be like hey i'm coming back again because the last show i went to was insane you put your whole heart out i mean yeah i definitely put my heart out i do yeah I, and, I, and i enjoy it but you know there's sometimes you know also right. there's sometimes i'm not feeling it i'm very anxious you know like, like like you said i i wear my heart on my sleeve i don't hide any emotions and you know, i think that is definitely the reason why i have such a solid cult like fan base because they're like, wow, this guy is successful. He's got money. He's got blah, blah, blah. He, he's got what everyone thinks is great. But he also is dealing with emotions and dealing with, you know, anxieties and issues. And, you know, everyday issues that the average person deals with. So before the show, I'm like a nervous wreck. I usually have to use the bathroom. Like my, my, my bowel movements are horrible. I usually have to like release that anxiety. And like, <laughs> basically, I take a shit before every fucking show. Like, because I'm so fucking nervous. It's, it's hilarious, but it's like when I get on stage, I feel fine. It like immediately when I jump on stage, everything goes away. I can breathe. I feel great. But, you know, that's why what I actually do is like if my set is at 9 p.m., I try not to pull up to the venue until like 8.58. Like I don't want because the worst is like when I pull up to the venue like four hours before the set and I'm in the green room just like counting down the minutes like, OK, I, OK, OK, I go on at this time. Like so what I do is like I hang out, I go eat. 
I hang out with the boys. I hang out with the crew. I hang out at the hotel. I take a shower. I do everything. And I try to get like almost to the point where I'm late for my own show so that as soon as I get there, I have no time to think. And I have to jump right on stage like, okay, we're ready for you. I love poker. I love tournament poker. I love cash poker. I, I love being streamed. I've done live at the bike so many times. It's so yeah. fun. Tell me about that. What stakes was, was that? What's the biggest pot you've uh, you played? At? So the biggest pot I ever won was $57,000 pot against Gall. Shout out to Gall. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so we'll talk about the poker now. So um, it was, and I was, you know, I was way in over my head. This was uh, a day before I was leaving to Europe for a, for like a 45 city tour. So I'm in live, I'm at live at the bike. I, I usually play like, you know, I'll play 510, I'll play 1025. I'll play, I usually play a game where I can buy, in, you know, 2000 to $5,000 max, right? Because that's comfortable for me. Like, right. I don't like to buy in more than 5000 Right. But. I was like, you know what? I'm going on tour. So worst case scenario, I lose this money. So I and and I'm playing with the the sickest guys ever. I mean, I'm playing. Garrett was supposed to be in that game. He wasn't, thank God. But it was art. It was art. You know, art. Mm-hmm. It was um, Dan Zach. It was Gall. It was um, I think Gary was there. It was fucking. Um, it was the sickest lineup. I mean, obviously people, I, I'm not oblivious. I'm very self-aware. Like people might be like, oh, this, this guy, like he's a fish. He thinks like he's better than me. Well, I know I'm worse than you guys. Like I'm right. self-aware. I'm, I'm mature enough to be self-aware. So my mentality was, look, I'm going to bring $30,000. If I lose this $30,000, I'm going to go make $200,000 in Europe. Right. Fuck it. I'm going to have fun. 